Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Z. I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel and welcome to Monday q &As. This is a place where I answer your direct and specific questions. So if you have a question for me uh, that is not diagnostic and something that I'm able to generalize, email it info at drzphd.com. The email is down in the description box. Having said that, I do ask all of you to please keep your questions brief. I honestly don't have the bandwidth to read through a lot of contextual information. And uh, if I do get a question that has so much contextual information, I will let you know that I'm unable unless you shorten it because honestly, again, I just don't have the bandwidth. Having said that, I'm excited for the six random questions I picked today from Q&A folder. I haven't looked at them yet. As always, I have kept your information private and there are going to be timestamps below for each of the questions. Having said that, let's get started. Question number one. Hi, Dr. Z. Thank you for your content on YouTube. It's helped me immensely over the past two years while I've been trying to work myself out. I'm a 39-year-old assigned female at birth who for the past few years has identified as a queer gender fluid person. However, after a lot of contemplation of just how much in my life I have felt a strong earning to be male and the overbearing sense of my body having things it should not and not having things it should, to remain PG about it, I'm aware that anxiety and fear has been stopping me all these years. I'm a trans man and need to live as such. Living as I am now has always felt like I have life and I can't do it anymore. If I want to be happy, I've been researching how to start testosterone in Australia and having worked on my past will, will be starting as soon as I'm able. My question is this. I work for a very supportive company who has not uh, batted an eyelid at my gender nonconformity. However, I'm unsure how to update them with the fact that I'm going to transition. Any tips or advice you could share would be pretty appreciated. This is something that has had my anxiety rumbling quite loudly lately. Well, sorry to hear that you have been feeling anxious about this. This is very, very common for people not really being sure how things are going to go when they come out at work and not really knowing or being sure how to even come out at work. So, for individuals who work for the company, usually my recommendation is uh, twofold. One, see if your company is big enough to have HR, human resource department. If your company has a human resource department, I recommend first going to the human resource department and uh, letting them know that you are trans, that you are going to go through transition and ask HR whether... Uh, they had anybody in the company come out before and if they have any ways of notifying uh, employees. HR may say, yeah, we, we've done this before. This is what we recommend. And then you may add or modify wherever makes you feel comfortable. Your HR might also say, oh, we've never done it before. How would you like for us to kind of uh, air your coming out? And that's when you also end up deciding what's best for you. Regardless of the case, what I recommend for people who work for companies, when it's time to come out, to do it short, brief to the point. Oftentimes, I would recommend to have HR put together an email to all of the employees or at least to employees on your team or those in proximity, because remember, the companies can be huge, right? Um, it's not really necessary to let people who may never come into contact with you in a company to know about your gender identity. So... I recommend to keep email very brief, very to the point. Um, this is to inform that so-and-so um, is identifying as transgender, their preferred pronouns are this, their, their name is this, and they will be going through physical changes. You may not even include they will be going through physical changes. So it's really up to you how much you want to include. My... Um, my tip, and this is what I learned works the best for a lot of my clients, is to make it as brief and include as little information as possible. You want to include things you want people to do, right? So if you want people to use your pronouns, that's what you want to include. If you are going to go by a different name, that's what you want to include. But in my opinion, you want to omit is 
How long have you been struggling with gender dysphoria? When exactly do you plan to start hormones? Uh, or any other personal information? Because honestly, it's nobody's business, one. And two, I found that the less information you give people, the better off you're going to be. Uh, people, colleagues, co-workers who care about you, they will always have an opportunity to come up to you and to ask you for more information if they want to. So that's what I would recommend. Um, sounds like your company um, already has been very comfortable with your gender nonconformity. Chances are you are in a really good environment. And so I would just go ahead and, and see if you can do it that way. If you don't have HR department, who is your boss? Talk to your boss, talk to your manager, talk to whoever is higher up. But yeah, I wish you all of the best and don't be anxious. Um, chances are you're going to be just fine and all the best to you. Question number two. Hi, Dr. Z. Your videos have been so very helpful in clearing the fog and questions that blocked my mind as, as someone who belatedly, late 40s to early 50s, came to the realization that I am in all likelihood transgender male to female, something I have come to acknowledge and accept. I have been repelled at such an idea of being transgender over the years and resisted the sign signals, sorry, of my own and femme inclinations and tendencies, which became persistent and habitual and something that remained whatever I did in terms of trying to be a macho male and having numerous engagement with beautiful women. Let me add my voice, let me add my voice to your insofar that it is totally hogwash that telling that being transgender is a choice. Very true. It is not a choice. For me, it has not been a choice. In fact, if those who claim to believe this being a choice could just realize the struggles, mental agony, and spiritual questions that one goes through and has to deal content with, totally agree. On top of it, the dread of facing your family, friends, and colleagues as a result of coming out or found out creates so much anxiety and uncertainty. So those who believe that I, we choose to be transgender, please know and appreciate that there were many times that I, we wished that dysphoria could just go away tomorrow. Life is challenged already, and this has complexity to it, 1000% degree. Given the backdrop, I have two questions. I have often grappled with the origins of my dysphoria, in particular the desire for feminine things and to be a woman in my case. What are the possible roots or causes of this dysphoria? Whew, that's a huge question you're asking there, my friend. Why or how does this arise within one born as male? So your first question is a question that every person is going to give you a different answer. Um, a biologist is going to give you a different answer. An anthropologist is going to give you a different answer. Psychologist is going to give you a different answer. A medical professional is going to give you a different answer. The reason why you're going to get different answers and there's not going to be one consensus is because there is no one clear understanding of where dysphoria uh, is stemming from. Some people say it could be uh, something that may have caused um, some form of um, shift even before you were born. Some might say that it could be the way your brain developed. Some people might say that, um, you know, this could be byproduct of so many other things. There's no one way to pinpoint what tends to be the root cause, if you will, of in terms of where the dysphoria is stemming from or why do people struggle with gender dysphoria. Especially today, since the gender landscape is shifting, we're also seeing a lot of young adults who are starting to have an onset of gender dysphoria uh, that begins as a form of social dysphoria versus actually physical dysphoria, which also lends out a different lens to understanding and conceptualizing gender dysphoria. So what you're asking is a question that doesn't have one answer. And I don't know when or if we are going to have one clear answer and one clear consensus. Some people say there's brain studies that shows that the brains of trans people are organized differently than brains of cis people. And again, even those studies are not 
um, consistent across the board. So very, very hard to say. I say it depends who you're talking to, but yeah, that's a million dollar question. Your second question, now that I have been on male to female hormones for over 10 years, the dysphoria has relaxed, but not much euphoria either. Libido is muted and now needs the right stimuli to be sexually triggered. Getting an orgasm is difficult, it takes longer, and is more of an overall experience. But to be female and letting her find expression remains with and in me nonetheless. And I love, enjoy it. I'd appreciate your views on this. So this is definitely something more that I can answer. Um, you know, I feel that people sometimes overestimate hormones and what hormones are going to do and even overestimate gender transition. Gender transition is not only all of these external changes, such as hormones to modify physical characteristics or gender affirming surgeries. Sure, they will get your body in alignment with how you see yourself, but what about achieving internal alignment within yourself? And that's a much more difficult task, and that's more psychological task, right? This is where I kind of tend to fall in. And for some people, when they neglect to work on internal alignment and they have achieved external alignment, they end up struggling because they feel like there's a void. And in fact, as you say, they don't experience much of euphoria. And to some extent, it's what is still present and they can't really put their finger on why. And they come to me and they say, I don't get it. I, I feel congruent. I feel like I achieved all of the external changes that I wanted to achieve. I feel good about myself. And yet, why do I still feel like I am empty on the inside? Why am I still really not sure who I am. And that's because the internal alignment, the internal integration have not taken place. So it's really important for everybody who is listening to realize that transition is not just external thing. It's a, it's even more so, I would say, an internal thing than it is external. I'd say external is what causes the most distress, immediate distress, but internal is what, um, what really... Once you once you align the internal, that's where all the pleasure and joy of living comes from. Now navigating life in your gender. It is very common on feminizing hormones that sexual drive is going to go down. Part of another um, aspect of this is that sometimes trans women forget that your sexual your sexual experiences, the way you experience being aroused, what it takes to be stimulated at this point is going to be different than the way you were sexually stimulated or experienced things prior to transition. Hormones play a huge role in it. Testosterone is very different when it comes to sex drive and stimulating things. Estrogen is also very different. So it's really relearning and understanding now your relationship to yourself as a woman and relearning and finding that sexual connection with you through female sexual passageways. And one of them is going to be estrogen. And that's in of itself an exploratory thing that I would really encourage for everybody to engage with. So hopefully that's answered your question. So I couldn't answer your question number one because there is just so many things. And I do have a video on um, formation of gender identity where I pinpoint that numerous things go into formation of gender identity. And that's another thing that makes it so challenging in terms of uh, gender dysphoria. Question number three. Dear Dr. Z. When a child is growing up, he, she begins to develop his or her own tastes based on experiences and interests. In this way, it begins to create connections in the brain, which becomes stronger and thus becomes a habit. I say this because growing up, I used to be very mad when things didn't go the way I wanted, and I believed it was because I was born that way. 
But as an adult, I learned that it was how I conditioned this response. Put gender just for your feet into the situation. It's interesting. We have questions today. Uh, people trying to understand uh, what causes gender dysphoria. Can your childhood tastes, experiences, and interests uh, lead to gender dysphoria? In my experience, no, they cannot. Um, look, we know so many people who were gender bending. I was very, very much a tomboy growing up. I only, my only friends growing up were uh, boys. I just uh, connected better with them. I played all the stereotypically masculine games with boys. I have two sisters and my mom always said, you're the only one that I will dress you all up in dresses and send you out to play. And you're the only one who will come back all dirty, scraped knees, bloody elbows, distressed dress. <laughs> so... I, all my childhood, I was very, very tomboyish. And it's in no way really affected my gender identity. My gender identity is very strongly uh, female. I very strongly identified with uh, femininity, as you can all see and as a lot of you know. So even though I had those gender bending expressions and roles, reversals, if you will, one way to say it, it still did not affect or condition me whatsoever. So I don't believe that gender dysphoria can be affected by environment to such extent. I, when I think about environment that we grow up in and how we're being conditioned into things and gender dysphoria, I think about sexuality, right? Uh, sexuality is something you innately feel. And you either attracted to a particular gender or you're not attracted particular gender it's almost it is innate thing within yourself and gender identity in my opinion is the same thing you either identify as one gender or you don't so i would say no in my opinion i have not seen that yet i know there's a lot of people who claim that to be so i think our upbringing and conditioning and how we're told uh, that if you're a girl you're supposed to do only this and if you're a boy you're only supposed to do this if anything, if we're not feeling comfortable, it just adds more confusion to the mix and it delays our realization of our authentic selves um, that much longer. So that's what I would say, but great question. And um, yeah, no, not in my opinion. I don't think so. Question number four. Hi, Dr. Z. I love your YouTube and TikTok videos. I have recently started therapy and have disclosed my dressing to my therapist and believe it may be a central part of many of my difficulties. I have developed a good relationship with my therapist, but I'm looking for additional resources or suggestions to work through who I am or my other issues, anxiety, depression, etc. I still don't know if I am just a cross-dresser or am trans. I have expressed with my therapist that if I had a magic wand, I would change genders. However, it is never that simple, is it? Any suggestion or resources I could share with my therapist would be appreciated. Again, I love your channel and the voice you give to all of us. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that you are in therapy. That could be very, very helpful when you're especially not sure how much of this is cross-dressing, how much of this is actually your gender identity. I'm not sure if you're asking for resources for you or for the therapist. Um, if you're asking for resources for your therapist, I recommend to just point them toward this channel. I have probably talked about gender dysphoria <laughs> um, to the point I'm taking my head off. Um, is that even a phrase? But what I'm trying to say is that I covered a lot of nuances about gender dysphoria uh, from a clinical perspective. I covered various ways it can manifest. I covered various ways it um, may uh, come across coping, lack of coping, things to watch out for, uh, additional psychological issues that may arise out of it. There's a lot of material here that if a clinician just said through my channel, they could learn a lot about gender dysphoria. In terms of for you and your resources, 
I would say you already are sitting in one of the best resources and that is being in therapy because even if your therapist is not a gender therapist, having somebody to talk to and having somebody to bounce off of questions is really important and I'm glad you're doing it. Um, the best way if you're trying to figure out if this is just cross-dressing is to explore socially explore, do things that are not medical, do things that are not surgical, do things that are non, in other words, are not uh, irreversible and just explore who you are. Do as much journaling and writing as you can, uh, dive deeper into yourself and monitor and see how things feel to you. Engage in gender bending behavior on a daily basis and just see what comes out of it. This is the best advice I could give anybody who is not sure. Exploration is the key. The more you explore, the more you start forming a pattern. And then once you see the pattern, it's pretty hard to unite. So that's what I would recommend. And I wish you all of the best. Question number five. I'm 46 years old and have been transitioning for one year and nine months. I'm experiencing unexpected problems, if you can call them that. Before hormones and transition itself, I like to present myself in fairly feminine way. I love skirts, heels, and I'm very good at doing my makeup. I also have a wardrobe full of clothes that I always wanted to wear openly to feel like my true self socially. The thing is, since I started hormones, I no longer feel the need to wear feminine makeup and clothes which is something I don't understand since I wanted to present myself as feminine since I was a child. In short, my whole life dream of 44 years seems to have vanished, and now I no longer feel the need to present feminine. Despite everything I really feel the femininity I always looked for, I'm lost and can't understand what's happening. I would appreciate if you could spread, spend a word on this topic in your next Q&A session, I just discovered your channel and I love it. Thanks for everything you're doing for the trans community. You are so, so welcome. Glad you discovered the channel. Um, and by the way, for all of you, if you have people who you feel can benefit from the channel, please do share and spread the word. Um, this is a completely free resource, as all of you know, and I just started podcast. So let's just grow it and let people find it easier. This is a great, great question. You have started hormones and suddenly your desire and urge to feminize and to present feminine had uh, really decreased, something you've been wanting since childhood and you're not sure what's really going on. One of the things uh, that I see this happen um, in terms of in my experience working with clients, when this happens, and this doesn't happen very often, but when this does happen, one of the things that I encourage for people to explore and to think about is this. Could it have been, and a lot of times this is the case, could it have been that when you were not on hormones and you were experiencing dysphoria and distress, feminizing and presenting as feminine was your coping, your way of decreasing the dysphoria, your way of helping yourself feel better. Sometimes we don't realize how the external, the dependency on clothing and makeup and all of the other gender things that are external are actually more of a coping for us versus who we truly are. And what I mean by that is remember, not, not every woman has to be completely, um, you know, makeup, accessories, clothes, some of you, your inner feminine archetypal style is very casual, very maybe down to earth, maybe very stripped down, and maybe that's just who you are. And it could have been that you were taking, uh, taking not hormones, sorry, if, is that you were feminizing as a way to cope and help you deal with gender dysphoria. Now that you're on hormones, the hormones are helping you take that age off, that feminizing and closing the and now that the age off the hormones, so you see what I mean? The hormones came in and they took over the coping that the dressing did for you. So now you're not finding yourself interested in it as much. This is one of the main thing, reasons why I see this happen to individuals. So see if this might be true for you. 
And one of the ways to find out if this is true for you is to explore who your inner feminine archetype is. Explore who she is. Explore what her style is. Find out when she likes to dress up and how she likes to show up. When she just likes to be very stripped down. Um, that's what I'd really recommend. One of the important things I think it is to pay attention to, and you said it here, is, um, let me see. You said that despite everything, I really feel the femininity I've always looked for. This is important. So despite everything, you feel deep connection to your femininity and to your feminine self. So that's what I would recommend. Explore that expressive you right now. Explore who you are as a woman. Um, what is your external essence? I do have a class. I just started online classes. And sorry, I, I don't really aim to do like promotional on here. Uh, but this is exactly what you're, what you're kind of questioning here. Either through the class that I have to find out what your inner feminine archetype is or just for yourself, do an internal work to figure out who is she. That's going to be really helpful. But it is common, albeit not so common, for people to start feeling um, like suddenly when they're on hormones, this body is lifted and they don't need to feminize as much. Because again, the feminizing was that crutch. It was that coping uh, versus necessarily an extension fully of who you are. Great, great. This is a really good question. So great question. And I wish you all of the best. Final question for today. Hi, Dr. C. Thank you for your many videos online. I have found them very helpful. You are so welcome. I'm a signed male at birth and was lifelong cross-dresser that only recently came to terms with the fact that I am trans. I'm 55 years old and married with two kids, 18 and 14. I've come out to my spouse and one close friend. I've started taking some steps toward transitioning, such as buying women's clothes that is more that is more adrangeous and wearing it in my daily life. I have started doing laser hair removal on my face and have been waxing most of my body hair for years now. I've had a consultation to start hormones and I am on a, a precipice of starting this. The one thing holding me back is my 14-year-old son. We were very close and have a very male-to-male -male type relationship. He faces many challenges such as learning disabilities and some low-level physical disabilities. I'm sorry to hear about that. I have always been there for him to pick him up, dust him off, and push him back into the game of life. I'm scared he will feel like this is an abandonment of him. I'm also scared of how his peers groups will treat him over my choice. This is particularly vulnerable age, and I feel like I should just wait a few more years. At the same time, now that I finally see myself clearly, I want to embrace who I am fully, feeling deeply conflicted and would appreciate your advice. Oh, you're not the only one. So many parents struggle with the same thing. Uh, whether they should hold off or uh, come out to their kids. If you know me, I say that, in my opinion, people should come out to their kids because that will just make you a better parent because you'll be more in touch with yourself. You address the dysphoria that is giving you distress. You can be more present. I, I don't think that your ability to pick him up, dust him off, and push him back into the game of life has to change because you are transitioning. Those are qualities that are genderless qualities. Those are qualities of a wonderful parent, of a wonderful supportive parent. And I don't think they have to change because you are transitioning. If anything, intuitively, I feel that your son struggling with his own challenges and tribulations is going to be able to maybe even connect with you more, seeing that he's not the only one struggling with challenges and interpretations. And who knows, maybe up to this point, he has been seeing you as the superhero, and now he's, he's going to see you as a human too. That can be so, so helpful. Um, when I did my first podcast, uh, for those of you who had a chance to listen to it, you know that I was very transparent about my own struggle with value uh, in terms of, um, making decision about uh, a very expensive dental transaction. 
And some of you wrote to me and said, oh my God, Dr. Z, I can't believe you're human. <laughs> you have struggles too. And yeah, I do have struggles too. And so do you, we all do. But it's not until we become vulnerable and share those things that it connects us to each other. And that's what I encourage for you to do. I, again, I, I don't think that there is the right time to come out to kids. I think there is just a time and the time is now. There's always going to be things down the road. There's always going to be now he's out of high school and it's also not a good time because he's entering college or there's always going to be reasons. I say, think about it. Talk to your partner about it. If this feels like, you know, it feels right, go for it. I'm contradicting myself because I said there's no right time, but there's that individual sense, you know. Um, that's the best advice I can give you. I do know that living and struggling with gender dysphoria makes a lot of people not fully emotionally present with their kids, not being fully emotionally present with their partners. And so I always encourage that um, it's important to be honest and transparent because it just helps everybody around you. Don't worry about your son. You know, your son might be bullied at school for numerous other reasons that just that just called life. And if anything, you can help him how to get through these difficult times. Um, remember that the resistances and challenges we go through just end up making us more resilient and much more stronger individuals. So that's what I wish to you. And hopefully this was helpful. I wish you all of the best. Thank you everybody for a fantastic set of questions. If you have a question for me, email it info at drzphd.com, link below. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at my podcast, link below too. And the podcast is going to come out on Thursdays now. And you can listen to the podcast on numerous platforms. It's now on Spotify and Apple and Amazon Music and um, Google Play as well. So uh, having said that, have a wonderful day and I will see you all next time. Bye.